Alright guys, so we all know Madden is a blitz heavy game, and if you can't handle the pressure, you will fold. Elite pocket presence is the most underrated skill in the game. I'm going to give you the basics of picking up heat, ID in the mic, double teaming and more. These are all essential if you want to become an elite passer and throw dots just like the pros. What's good with y'all, man? I got a couple things I want to go over with you guys, and I think it can really elevate you guys' Madden skills. First thing I want to get you guys to stop doing is drifting back outside of the pocket. This mistake can make you guys icons disappear, it makes pass protection worse, and it makes some throws way harder to make than it needs to be. This is a common mistake that a lot of beginners do because they think they're moving away from the pressure but they're making it so much harder on themselves. As you can see here, if you drop back too far, your wide receiver's icons will disappear. Along with that, you're giving the edge rushers a better angle to come and sack you. Along with that, you're making the distance of your passes longer than they need to be, giving the defender an opportunity to come make a play on the ball. As you can see, this seam route is wide open, but you're so far back, it's giving the safety time to recover. Now I want you to take a look at what you should be doing, stepping up in the pocket, making the distance of the pass shorter and easier to complete. Along with that, you're stepping up in the pocket, avoiding the pressure from these edge rushers. And I'm making this throw without a pass and velocity ability, with it, It'll be even easier. You want to get in a routine of stepping up in the pocket versus drifting back and making things harder on yourself. You also will get way more inaccurate passes by falling back outside of the pocket like this. So, first thing first, get comfortable moving forward, stepping up in the pocket and not drifting back. It makes a huge difference. Now, to practice and get comfortable doing that, I got something for you. I like to take the ball and mark it right about here. Now, with the ball being placed here, it forces you to step up because you can't fall back now. To start, you just want to go against a three-man pass rush and just stay alive as long as you can inside of the pocket without drifting back. This will help you step forward, avoid the pressure, while keeping your eyes downfield to make a play. With just a three-man pass rush, it's very easy. So once you get comfortable doing that, you want to go against a four-down lineman set. Then you want to attempt to do the same thing. Stay alive in the pocket without drifting backwards and keep your eyes downfield to make a play. The four-down lineman pass rush will come in way faster, but it will help you develop much better pocket skills. The longer you can stay alive in the pocket, the better.
But trust me, stepping up away from the pressure is so much better than drifting backwards. The edge rushers will kind of get behind you and you'll be able to step up away from it and keep your eyes down the field. All right, and the next thing I wanna go over with you guys is the importance of IDing the mic. Here, I'm gonna be going up against the ever so popular DB Fire from Dollar. With this blitz, the slot on the left side normally comes in free no matter what you do. I know this blitz can be very frustrating and once it comes in a couple times, people's natural reaction would be just to block the running back. Well, let's see what happened if you block your running back. As you can see, the blitz still comes in with a block running back and they actually got two people in that time. Let's take a look again. This is where the ID the mic feature comes in handy. Let's take a look what would happen if I block my running back, then ID the slot blitzer on the left side over here. As you can see, now the running back will recognize and pick him up, giving me room to step up in the pocket and keep my eyes downfield to make a play. Okay, let's take a look at the replay. I want you guys to keep your eyes on the running back as you see him slide over to pick up the blitzing DB. From there, I follow tip number one, which is step up in the pocket versus drifting back. And I have way more time to make a play now. Let's do it one more time. I'm gonna block my running back. Then I'm gonna ID the slot defender on the left side. These are the pass protection steps you wanna take each play. Then after that, you wanna set up your hot routes to attack the defenders downfield. This is a perfect example here. Block the running back, ID the blitz and defender, step up in the pocket, keeping my eyes downfield, and then throw a dot simple next i want to go over how i use the double team feature on the game a block tight end does not stand a chance against an elite pass rusher in madden 24. take a look at what nick bosa is going to do to this tight end if you leave your tight end one-on-one -on -one with an elite edge rusher you're just asking for a disaster So if you want to block your tight end to get a little more pass protection, a little more time, it is mandatory that you double team the edge on the same side that he's blocking. Now the offensive tackle will give him a hand so he won't get that insta shed coming in sacking you every time. So if you intend on blocking your tight end, you need to double team the edge defender that's in front of him. Do not leave him one on one. Another way to utilize this double team feature that a lot of people don't know is countering the inside stuff ability on the defensive line. Here, I'm going against Kenny Clark, who has inside stuff, and I want you to see what consistently happen if I run an inside zone against him. As you can see, he'll get an insta shed every time and make a tackle in the backfield. Now, if you intend on running inside zone, you wanna take your double team feature and select him and take a look at what's gonna happen now. 
The crazy thing about it is he doesn't actually get double teamed, but his ability will not light up and he will not make a play in the backfield. Let's take a look at it again here. As you can see here, the double team feature is very effective if you plan on countering these inside stuff abilities. Run the ball his way without the double team and... I hope these tips can help you take a step forward into becoming a better Madden player. And if you haven't checked out the first two episodes, I suggest you take a look at those as well. With that being said, please like, comment, and subscribe for great Madden content all year round.